the resurrection, what would this Bible be? Thank God for the reality of the Bible that we have before us this morning. Every verse in this book right here. If we didn't have the resurrection, there's going to be for us to have the Bible. You understand where I'm coming from? Because everything, every promise goes right back to the resurrection that's made in the blessed word of God as such. And every promise in this book right here is for you and for me and for us to keep what the Bible says. We ought to want to know what the Bible says so we can know the reality of that resurrection and the power of it and the power of the Lord in our lives as such. The third thing is the reality of the gospel. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I know I'm giving you a good bit of scripture this morning to get you uh, a little short drift. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is known as a resurrection chapter in the Bible. I believe it's a portion of scripture that every child of God ought to familiarize himself with. Because the first 19 verses we have Negative after negative after negative after negative. And then in verse 20, here's the positive. Our preaching is in vain, everything is in vain, if he be not risen. But then Paul comes with verse 20, he says, But now is Christ risen and become the first fruits of them which slept. Then I love those verses that follow. Going on verse 57, thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right, now, here in the first few verses of chapter 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I received, how that Christ died, died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So we thank God today for the gospel. The gospel is the account of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Thank God today for the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ when it comes to him dying in your place, my place. Nobody cares if I live or die. Don't let the devil tell you that. If there's anything contradicting the scripture, is that that contradicts the Bible. Jesus loved everyone. I believe he died for everyone. God so loved the world that he gave his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not some and some left out as such. So the gospel is for the world. We are to go and tell the world the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That's why we have missionaries right now that we support around the world out there today. Souls being saved in church and the church out there that we have a part in today because they need the gospel, the same gospel that brought salvation to you and to me. Now, thank God for the reality of the gospel. Thank God for the, I'm moving along now, for the reality of salvation over in the gospel of John chapter 11. Very familiar scripture. Uh, you hear it quite often at funerals. But I'm going to read these verses. John chapter 11, beginning with verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. I love this. 
Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou me. Aren't you thankful today for the gospel, Amen. the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Amen. Now, aren't you grateful for the gospel that's made that wonderful salvation that we can experience through the reality of what Jesus has done for us. Going to the cross. Everything just as he said. Just as he said. Thank God for that. And then as far as salvation, I hope you know this morning. Beyond any question, any shadow of that. That you're saved and on your way to heaven. The sweetest thing this side of heaven is reality of salvation is real. Amen? Amen. It's real. Peter and John says, you can put us in prison. You can do what you want to. But I can't help it. I can't help it, tell it. Amen. We need some Christians today to let the can't help us be real in their lives and getting out here and telling folks about Jesus Christ and our salvation. Oh my, I hope you don't go through this day just feeding your mouth, but you go through this day uh, thinking about what a wonderful, wonderful thing Jesus did in making salvation possible for you through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sweet, the best news is in the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. The best message, the word that uh, uh, it, it is dearer than any word is that word that touched these mortal ears of yours and mine when we heard the gospel yeah. of the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and trusted in Christ as Savior. Aren't you thankful today? Somebody loves you enough to tell you about Jesus so you can put your faith and trust in him. I'm not talking about joining the church. I did that at the age of 12 along with some others just as lost as I was. Jesus made the difference when salvation came. I look at Miss Joy today from time to time and I think of what she has said over and over. That she knew the night that I got saved she had a new husband. Oh my. What a miracle. <coughs> miracle. And then the real thing is the reality of resurrection. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about your resurrection and my resurrection. <coughs> it all is about everything I talked about this morning is the reality of resurrection as far as the resurrection of Christ. Listen to me. It's a boy that a man wants to die. And after that, there's judgment. All right. We can't talk our way out of it. We can't buy our way out of it. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is who he has proclaimed to be and will be our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us that there's a time when the just will be resurrected. And then there's a time when the unjust, those who have never gotten saved, will be judged. Now, thank God for the reality of the resurrection. Paul says, Behold, I show you a mystery in chapter 15. Verse, verses, uh, verse 52, actually, I think it is. So I miss you. Jesus is more than a picture. He's more than a figure of a crucifix. He ever lived, he's alive. Jesus says, and I was alive, and I died. Revelation chapter. 
chapter 1, verse 18. And look at me. I know, but I'm alive. And write it down on your memory. With an indelible impression, I'm alive forevermore. Are you it? Jesus didn't have to die for you. He didn't die for me. He didn't die for someone else. He died for the world because that was who God loved and was willing to give his son, his son. I'm already let him go through this morning. I'm glad he's not in the manger of Bethlehem. I'm glad he's not on that old rugged cross. I'm glad he's not in a bar or two. I'm glad he's not on that mountain. I'm glad he's going to heaven. And he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'm not so dumb to avoid prepare a place for you and then not come back and get you far. I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That why there you may be also. You know what we ought to have in our homes? More and more of heaven. You know what we ought to have in our churches? More and more of heaven. And the more and more of heaven we get, the more and more we ought to try to get folks saved by the grace of God and on the way to heaven. My Jesus is more than a preacher. He's more than a preacher. He's alive. Alive. Today is resurrection reality. It's hard to believe for me. It's hard for me to believe we're not about it. That John, the other disciple, was referred to, the one the Lord loved so. He won the race, the foot race. The Bible teaches us he outrun Peter to that grave. Come and see. Isn't that a good message? Come on in here and see. See for yourself. Give yourself a chance. What is it? Those gray clothes, linens, are there. When the Lord does something, he's jealous. And he wants you to know he did it. Me to know he did it. It's not something you did, not something I did. And the blessed book teaches us that those clothes, just like they would have been wrapped around him, They were intact, in place when Peter and John looked in that grave. You say, what are you trying to say? It was like you're looking at me right now. Just look at man now. Now, you're looking at me right now, and all of a sudden, whoop, I evaporate. Yeah. That little hanky, there you go, still there. <laughs> Go see him. You say, that's hard to believe. Faith. All things are possible with God. And there's no period there. All things are possible with God to him that believe. Oh my. It gets sweeter as the days go by. Because more and more on this whole earth I can see. His hand of mercy. And I can hear. You see, you hear voices. No, I see him working. I can hear his voice of cheer. And what is he there for? Why is the Holy Spirit of God indwelling the believer every morning? Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for indwelling me. Thank you for sealing me until the day of redemption. That's the redemption of this body, not my soul. Are you with me? He's there. He's there. To let us know the reality of Christ and what he's done for us. Yeah. Let me prepare you. In 
the Bible is thou shalt confess with thy mouth, believe with thy heart that God has raised Christ Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. What did the angel say? Come on and see. What is the Lord saying to us? Come on and see. Come on and see. Don't you like to sing a song that reminds you how he's proved himself over and over and over and over and over again? Amen. Oh, my. What a wonderful Savior. Amen. Come and see. Oh, what am I doing? And the power of his resurrection. But stop there. And the fellowship of his sufferings. His sufferings. Why does Paul say that? That I might be like you. Years ago, that choir went back to its field in the Joyce Fan, South Carolina. The church band, we know it next. So we knew our battles. Because people could see, you know, Miss Joy was getting not quite what why she used to be. <laughs> the preacher led to the Lord came. We knew our battles. I remember when he came to pick us up. In the limo, well, that's a long way from the judge's house. I go out of the house now, I go home. That's where we got married. I thank God. We're still together. Amen. We renewed our vow for a special time. The church had a place for us to go. Preacher led me to the Lord, have us in his band. I thought, well, we don't want to spend time with you. <laughs> it was a sweet time. Nothing could be compared to the time when a child of God in a bachelor condition could come to an old fashioned home and say, Lord, 
I need you to renew my spirit. Right? Yeah. Renew. What does it mean? Renew. How many times have you had something work going on? Man, that thing's like new. Yeah. A lot of marriages today need some working on. Amen. That's some renew. You know why? A husband with the wrong spirit toward his wife. A wife with the wrong spirit toward her husband. That's a great reason. But the song says, I need you to renew a right spirit within me. Yeah. I wrote that song back that I had. Uh, it's renewal time. Are you as close to the Lord? The closer you get to the Lord, the more you appreciate this. The closer we get to the Lord, the more we'll realize, I need Jesus Christ in my life more than you do. Oh, in our marriage, we need more money. No, 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 no. We need the Lord in charge, in control. Little is much when God is in and God does a pretty good job of taking little and making much out of it. For the good of God. Amen. Resurrection. Thank you for that same power that killed our Savior on that cross. Brought our Savior up out of that tomb. Lord, I pray this morning if there's anyone here lost and without Jesus, that this would be happy birthday for that person. There are three people sitting here this morning I've been told about. Lord, that the day is physical birthday. The Lord is nothing common to that spiritual birthday. I pray someone might get saved right here this morning. As our heads are bowed, eyes are closed, 